and steady Love shame silhouette I feel I'll be ready I hope I don't regret the Basically, we'll both play the same festival here in Doncaster. And, um, you know, someone called Keith Langley, who's extra of Utah Saints, um, he was working with you before, wasn't he? Well, no, I met him at the same Oh, same you meet him that day? We were doing an acoustic set, and yeah. I, I opened this festival up. And um, he just saw us both and said, well, oh, you know, we two should get together and, and, and try and work together and yeah. write some stuff. So, straight away, didn't we? You came. Okay. We went first, we had like a mini jam in his mum and dad's living room, didn't we? And uh, like clicked straight away and we were like, something special, wasn't it? <laughs> Felt that way, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. So. And, then, and then as it developed, we uh, spent a bit of time writing, doing some gigs. You know, I did a bit of a different sound then. And then um, it kept to the point where Joel joined the band from, well, we knew each other from coming in the shop really, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, we just start, start talk about music, you know, all sorts like that was good. Yeah, and I think one day he said, oh, I'll start coming down for a jam one day, so, so I think I brought my guitar around just next night, made a jam with Stasi, and then the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Rich, who can't be here today, he's a... Uh, we found, we found him alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're dating one time. We can't fish him. We can't fish him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, put, we, uh, we, we had a lineup and we, uh, we tried a few different drummers and stuff and it didn't, weren't really working and then uh, we stumbled across Rich who was doing bits and bobs of session stuff and that and then uh, he, came, he came with a vision of session with us I think and then we just played with us once and then he just said, oh, right, that's it, yeah, I want to be in this band so we were happy with him, he was happy with us and then yeah, it's just, that's where it all began. And what's the story behind the name? We were in a tapas bar in Sheffield, <laughs> right? But we'd like come up with like loads of different stuff. Yeah. And we'd, like we even like tried putting our names together to like come up with some sort of like freaky thing. But uh, yeah, we're in Tapas Bar in Sheffield. We got a bit of a list together, didn't tapas. we? And um, you know, we what Bam Bam Romeo is about. You know, it's it's dark, it's love and death, and it's you know, it's all the happy things. <laughs> <laughs> but we put it together, and you know, Romeo, Shakespeare, Bang Bang Gong. It kind of you know it just rolls off the tongue. It, it suits what we're about, so. And for people who've never listened to you before, how would you describe your music? Um, I find it hard for us to describe it, but most people are saying it sounds like we should be on the Tarantino soundtrack, or it's got that flavour, like a 60s psychedelic kind of vibe to it as well, isn't it? So that's, that's what, that was what we've, we've been working with um, a producer called Chris Kimsey uh, down in London, who's worked with like, Rolling Stones and such in the past, like big artists. And uh, he, we asked him after we first. Had a rehearsal and he came to look to see if he wanted to work with us or not. And we tried to say to him, like, could you sort of pin us down, pigeonholes? Would you say we sound like? And he said, well, I can't really like pin you down as another band, but I'd say like sort of like a Tarantino with that soundtrack. And me and Ross was like looking at each other because we were just like, this is what we've been saying for months. Like, well, what would it sound like? So, Constantly watching Django. Yeah, yeah, Django and Chained about fifty thousand times. <laughs> so yeah. They genuinely did watch it fifty thousand times as well. Just said no exaggeration. Constant <laughs> quotes. 24-7, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how we do it. It's great. Lovely. So, with the film references, and obviously with Satya and Revolver, what part does fashion play in Bang Bang Romeo? Yeah, it's a big part. Well, obviously, I've had this shot with my friend Paul like for uh, four years, 
So um, you know, we've been trying to bring something different to Doncaster, fashion-wise, with Fred Perry, Merck, that kind of thing, Penguin. But um, it's a bit the same with the music. We're trying to do something different. And, and I suppose yeah, they do they do mix. We we've, we've got a thing going off with uh, Merck. First of all, we we um, got invited down to their headquarters in London. Uh, did a bit of an interview with them, and they like provided us some clothes and stuff. And they're, they're really following us. And just recently, um, we've got involved with Fred Perry subculture as well, and they've done. A big thing about us put us on Twitter and stuff like that. So um, tend to wear quite a bit of Fred Perry and stuff like that. So it's had a big uh, impact as well on the, just the forming of the band. Because um, it was from like being into sort of fashion and that and these sort of horrendous shirts that I like to wear. Um, Revolver's the only really place anywhere around here that I can get this sort of stuff. So I used to be in quite a lot and I've also been talking to Ross and stuff. And we get talking about music and it'd be like a daily sort of thing. And sometimes it'd be for hours and then yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd get rid of me, could you? And then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's played a big part, I suppose, sort of through fashion that we've first got to know each other, don't we? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's also good to know that the fashion that you originally liked now likes you back, but you know, with the mayor and yeah, yeah. helping out, it's good to know that what you're into is actually into you. So it's good when it, it works like that. We've got a big like, celebrity fan, haven't we? In, um, uh, Ralph. Ralph. Ralph Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Ralph Anderson. He plays Finchie in the office, and uh, he, he would have. He, Merck did a thing with him in the first place and they asked him what kind of music he's listened to. He's been to see a few times in London. Yeah, actually. yeah. And Big he, um, he, uh, he, he just he mentioned picked us up and then through that Merck. That opened a few doors, didn't it? Yeah, which is good stuff. So, bringing it back to the music, how does it work with the songwriting? Who does what role? Mm. It varies. A lot of time I'll come with a tune or you know, an idea or stars, you'll have an idea or whatever. We'll, we'll just go to the practice room, we'll knock that idea out and then it just turns into to what we're doing. Now. It's, it's, it seems, I don't know, we've, we've really got it off to a T. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's a bit of something. Like, the, the ideas will usually come from Ross, I think, and then. Uh, but usually the idea is, by the time it's finished, song is completely different. Yeah, so everyone, has, everyone has their own input on it, don't they? So yeah. everyone has their own part to play in this process thing. We usually just start from a little riff. It's amazing that. just coming up with an idea. In my, if I'm just sat at home or whatever, and I just think, oh, that sounds like it. And I know for a fact she's got an amazing voice. and <laughs> She'll just do whatever she can on it. And then Joel's just awesome. And everybody just, you just know, to, to, when you think of something, and just know that it's going to be took to a whole different place. It's a great feeling, yeah, just to know that. It's kind of like when you like show a, a song that you like wrote. Like I do it with my dad, and I know you do it with your family. When you wrote something, and then you're like in your own head, you're like, "This is where the symbols come in." Okay, now this is happening. I mean, you can't hear it, but it's going off in my head. Okay, but like we'll, we'll go to have a practice. The practice will accidentally, genuinely, to we'll we'll come home and be like, "Right, I've got a new song." Where did that come from? Yeah, most of them seem to happen by accident, don't they? Like, yeah. We'll have half an hour spare at the end of something, and then we'll just be messing about or something, we'll start playing something, and then half an hour later we've got a new song. Like it's, it's never really been a force thing. We never sat down and thought, oh, yeah. we're writing a song now. It just seems to just clicks. Fall out. Mm -hmm. Fall out. Yeah. <laughs> so, which part is your favourite? The songwriting, being on stage. For me, it's being on stage. Um, you crave it when you're not on stage, and it, you know it's what you do. So you, you always want to be there. It's just there's a there's a massive adrenaline rush that nothing else can, you know. I think this year as well, I've been really lucky because we've worked in uh, Par Street Studios in Liverpool, where like the lights of yeah. Coldplay and the Coral and stuff have worked, and then down in London we're in Maloko Studio and like Arctic Monkeys recorded there and stuff, and uh, like it's been sort of an eye opener on that side of things as well, like the whole. Like we've, we've all been in bands before and recorded in the studios, but to get into these like really legit studios has been like it's like 1960s organs all lying about and stuff, and then it doesn't sink until you leave, does it? After like, when you go, have we just been there? Is that yeah. where we've just been? And, and the it people we've worked with this year as well has just been like, like obviously Chris Kimsey is with the likes of Rolling Stones and stuff. Tony Platt, who's he um, he's produced our next single. He um, he's worked with like say AC, ACDC and stuff. Then Sean Gnocchi, who's uh, just taking over the uh, mixing and mastering of our next single. He's uh, he's been working like the likes of Queens of Stone Age and stuff. So yes, yeah, just all of it. Like I can't really believe that we're sort of mixing with these sort of people who've been shoulders of. So it's it's been nice that side of things. Especially when they like your music as well. They're not just they do it because they genuinely enjoy yeah. what you're doing and they dig what you're doing and you know it makes you it like makes you realise that yeah we are doing something right. So. Speaking of other people in the industry, who in the future would you like to play with? Oh, what band to play with? Oh. For me, I mean, I think we've all got different ones. Yeah. Um, 
I think now as like as we progress with the sound, if we gigged with Fleetwood Mac, it would be pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the universal one, really, isn't it? Like, yeah. We've always really idolised Fleetwood Mac, haven't we? So. At least we've made it realistic. Black Keys. Uh, and Black Rock Rock Club, yeah. little, little big of a decent one, yeah. Yeah, the slow one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But is that the ultimate dream to play Little Sleep with Mac, or is there something else? Glastonbury headlining. Yeah. After watching that TV, we're there. Yeah. I think, I think that would be the, yeah. the dream. Yeah. 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 Be a successful yeah. band, you know, yeah. have people yeah. love music as much as people like, you know, love big bands and just do something you know that's good. Yeah. Well, it was, like I say, I was there this weekend and like Sabian said, ten years ago they opened up the festival in a little 50 person tent. So uh, it's not it's not impossible, is it? So yeah, it maybe they'll dream bigger. Dream <laughs> big. So bringing it back to Doncaster, what do you think of the music scene here? Good. Like, it's getting better. So it's definitely, uh, definitely something that's improving at the minute because uh, we, we, we had a bit of a lull for a while, but obviously um, Diamond Live, we've got a gig coming up there, that seems to be a really kick up arse needed. Like a, a Cavaliers have just played there. Yeah, with Alice Friday, it really got atmosphere on that one, and it's, it's, it was what it needed really, a really purpose built live venue. And, uh, yeah, but it feels really good as well, like from a female's point of view, that we do have, you know, the female artists here, we've got... Uh, Laura Kelly, who's a local singer-songwriter, who's it's all right. A local singer-songwriter who's you know taking it as well. Kaziah from Kaziah and the Kings. Yeah, it's good to know that there's like female thing because a lot of places it's just all lads wearing skinny jeans, putting on an Alex Turner accent. I find a lot, of but and that's not just on because it's everywhere you go, you know, because it's such a massive influence. But for me personally, it's really good to know that. Females are bringing it home. <laughs> How does it compare for you all to playing in Doncaster to other places? It's always good to come back and play in Doncaster. We try not to do it too much, but um, when we do, we seem to have a good crowd, you know, to come and see us. But we tend to try and get out to London as much as possible, and we've got a good following, you know, coming to see us down there. And, you know, it's a big happening place, and it's where we find like we need to be at the moment. Um, yeah, it's, it's always the best coming ever anyway, so all the friends and family are yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, when you know that everyone's supporting you and you come back home and you do come home and everyone's there. And you don't have to worry that people are just going to show up. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> I think we, we do change every time we do final playing dockers because we have been doing these, like, lucky to be doing stuff like, you know, recording these top places with these. And not all the time we're getting, like, feedback from people like Chris Kimsey and stuff. It's, soaking into us and we're, we're learning all the time and, and like seeing all these other bands so every time you know we might leave it for three or four months till we play again here so hopefully people do see wow they've come on a bit more and hopefully anyway but it feels that way and what's next um, well, we've got a few things now yeah we've diamond live is the next one isn't it? big one in Doncaster. Big, yeah. big homecoming show um, can't wait to get on that stage it's, it's going to be quite a special that one we've got a few friends coming down to play with us Polka Dodge from Sheffield they're a good band Energetic f indie four piece. We've got um, Alfred Moz and Moz and his downtown yeah. roots coming as well. And uh, yeah, we've, so, we've, we've, we've got, got uh, tram lines that's coming up. Yeah, we've got to play two or three stages. Yeah, we've got a few interesting things there, haven't we? Yeah. Got, um, Friday night we're doing Fog and Parrot, and then we've got we've been invited to do the Busker Bus on the Saturday, which is a bit of a privilege. Yeah. And then um, yeah. really wanted a rocking chair on a Saturday night and. Do we have to wear seatbelts on that bus? I don't know. I'm not sure what the regulations to put on the bus. <laughs> Cut this <laughs> uh, And then uh, the big thing for us is a new single. It's just coming off the back of this uh, EP we just done, We Were Born, which is still available on iTunes and stuff, um, is our new single, Revolver, which is the name of my shop. <laughs> um, Old times and you say marketing. And that's what we yeah, recorded with Tony Platt in Liverpool, uh, and that's just getting reproduced kind of thing with a guy called Sean Ganocchi. And that should be out end, end, of of July. end of July, really. So it yeah. times it nice with the Diamond Live gig and uh, anything else. So, yeah, looking yeah. forward to it coming We've out. We've just done a video as well for yeah. it. So. Yeah. We've had a lot of involvement with the uh, BBC as well. They've been really good to us recently. Like we um, about three or four months ago, they give uh, Hugh Stevens give uh, Carnival play on Radio One, and um, and then more recently Mark Forrest give the next single Revolver. He gave a, a play across the entire BBC local network and uh, they've really been behind us at the minute so there's possibly a few things in the pipeline with them I'm not sure we're allowed to talk about yet but um, yeah some exciting things going on there and uh, yeah we need to thank Christian Carlisle for that because he's really backed us from BBC Sheffield and uh, 
yeah, that seems to be taking off. That's, so there could be a few little exciting things coming along there, but we'll uh, we'll leave that for when it's signed, sealed, and delivered. <laughs> So, I suppose we'll see you at Diamond. Yes, see you at Mine's a guess. <laughs> <laughs>